Hello, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Nice to see you. My name is Jo, and I'm going to be taking you for this live lesson today. Um, so if you could start by just saying hi um, and where you are in the world in the in the comments. I see lots of people. Hi, Mohammed from Kenya. Okay, great. Okay, we've got Dashika from Sri Lanka on YouTube. Hello, Bertha in Botswana. Great. We've got people from all over the world. Okay, we've got um, Kafu from Ghana. Great. Nice to see you. Good morning, everyone. So, um, what we're going to be doing today <clears throat> is um, reading a common spelling mistakes and how to avoid them. Um, I do apologize if there's a little bit of background noise outside my window. I think someone is uh, doing some construction work, which I wasn't aware of. So um, that's what that noise is, if you do wonder what it is. So do apologize for that. I'm afraid I'm not able to um, stop that, but hopefully it won't be too um, distracting for you. Okay, so um, let's have a little look. So before we begin, I just want to tell you some of the things that we've got going on um, that might help you with your OET preparation. Okay, so we've got here um, Reach OET B Nursing and Medicine. Um, we've got our OET Writing Correction Service, and we also do OET practice tests as well. Um, and if you're a slightly lower level, we've also got some new courses coming up. Um, uh, we've got a grammar um, course, um, that can help you improve your grammar in order to get your level up. So we've got um, all kinds of things going on as well. Um, the Reach OETB, you can buy the whole package, reading, listening, speaking, writing, or you can buy individual packages as well. Um, it's a great, great self-study um, platform, really interactive. You can do it on your own, a self-study, or you can do it in combination with um, tutored hours with a one-to-one -one teacher if you want. Um, so it includes guided practice in the skills and strategies for the exam, vocabulary and grammar activities, access to our video tutorial library, four live lessons a week with the teacher, so you'll actually see a teacher and be able to communicate with them in the chat, and also two full practice tests. Okay, so please do um, check it out, our website, specialistlanguagecourses.com. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to look at why spelling is important in reading A, common mistakes, um, and tips on how to avoid them. So first of all, a little question for you. Let me know in the comments which statement is true about reading A. Okay, let me know now. So A, minor spelling errors are allowed. B, the word must be the same, but you can change the form. I will see words must be exactly the same as in the text. Which one? Okay, so I can see lots of answers coming in. Mm -hmm. Great, and I think all of you, if not most of you, are saying C, which is great. That's the correct answer. So in reading A, the words must be exactly the same as in the text. So let's do a quick recap of reading A, if there's anyone here who's new to OET. So reading A is 15 minutes long with four texts and 20 questions. <clears throat> And there are three different task types. So you have a matching task, short answer task, and sentence completion task. And remember that reading a paper is taken away after 15 minutes, okay? So you cannot continue after this time. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, the strategies for reading a, first of all, do not read the text. You just don't have time. Look at them to see what each text is about, the kind of information included, notice any headings and any standout information. Step two, complete the matching task first without looking, only check if you need to. 
And step three, complete the other task types next. So you need to decide what information you're looking for and which text you will find the information. And you can use words and phrases from the questions to help you find the answer. And the answer is a word or a phrase from one of the texts. Remember, move on. If you cannot find the answer, remember the paper is collected after 15 minutes. So why is spelling important? Good question. Well, reading A is 20 marks out of the total 42 marks in reading in the whole reading paper. So that's nearly 50% of the reading marks. And to get the mark, the word must be exactly the same as in the text. So don't lose valuable marks by getting the answer correct, actually finding the answer, but copying the word incorrectly. Yeah, so always take a second or two after writing to check you have copied the words accurately, particularly if it's a long word, um, such as a, um, uh, a medical condition or medication. Okay, so here is an extract from an OET reading A. Um, and here is the answer here. Falling on an outstretched hand is a typical cause of a dislocation of the elbow. So let me know in the comments, would this answer get a mark in the OET exam? Yes or no? And perhaps why? Would this answer <clears throat> okay, some people saying no. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And why? I mean, at first glance, it looks correct, right? Mm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so this wouldn't get the answer. If we look here, this location is spelt wrong. Okay, we've missed out the letter I, which is needed to get the point. Okay, so you need to make sure that you copy the words correctly. Okay, so let me know what is the biggest challenge in reading A? Let me know in the comments now. Mm hmm Okay, so spelling, skimming. <laughs> yeah, lots of you saying time, time, time management, find the answers in time, time, time. Oh, Anna Maria, she loves reading A. That's great. <laughs> okay, good to hear. I like reading A. It's fast paced. Yes, but when you're under pressure in the exam, um, it is stressful to do it in time. So when I speak to my students, you know, the actual activity is not so difficult, but put the time pressure of 15 minutes and that is the big, big challenge. Yeah. So one of the biggest challenges in reading aids, not the only challenge, is time management. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there's 20 questions in 15 minutes. I think that's about 45 seconds per um Per question. And so the lack of time can lead to errors. Okay. Errors with copying answers incorrectly, errors with writing too many words, and also repeating unnecessary words from the question, for example. Okay. So what can you do to help with this? Well, underline the word in the text once you find the answer to help you focus. 
You know, some people find that visual underlining very useful. For numbers, ask yourself, does it need a measurement, kilograms, milliliters, centimeters? Is it asking for a range or a maximum or minimum number? So be careful about that. Um, and be extra careful when it's a word you've never seen before. Double check medications, procedures, medical conditions with long names. And write clearly. If they can't understand your writing, you're not going to get the point. So we're going to take a look at some common errors. <clears throat> so what I'd like you to do now is we have here one of the texts from a reading A paper. So I'm going to give you 45 seconds and I just want you to read the text, okay? And pay attention to the spelling of some of the words. Okay, so just read the text now. Okay, so you've hopefully just read through the text now. So I'm going to go to my next slide. And here are some words from the text. Some of them are correct, some of them are incorrect. So which ones do you think are spelled incorrectly? So let me know the numbers in the comments. Okay, so which numbers are spelled incorrectly? <clears throat> Okay. Mm. All of you saying three, which is great. Some of you saying one. Mm -hmm. Some of you saying six as well. Okay, let's take a little look. So, one, three, five, and six. <clears throat> okay, so um, <clears throat> these are common errors that often happen in the OET exam, where candidates um, have put the vowels in the incorrect order. So check the order of vowels. Also, remember, don't change the word form, okay? Um, so thinking about singular and plurals, but also the spelling changes. Some people will read injuries, but then they'll write it with a Y instead of the I-E-S. So do make sure that you are aware of common plural spelling, spellings, the rules. So if it ends in a Y, you say bye-bye Y, hello I-E-S. Okay, and then number five, um, these are common word endings. So in um, <clears throat> British English, um, L-E is a very common um, word ending like RE as well, for example, from meter and um, center and things like that. Okay. Um, and here we've got outstretched. So here it's been written like it sounds, um, you know, outstretched. We don't pronounce the T, but we do write it. So it's sound versus spelling. So again, do double check, especially when there are lots of consonants together. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so let's have a little look. So I have here, this is another text, um, and I have a question. So I'd like you to use your skimming and scanning skills to find the answer for question A. So I'm gonna give you 45 seconds. So what should be used to elevate a patient's fractured leg? Let me know in the comments now. Oh. 
okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you just saying pillow. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have a little look. So I would like you to look at this answer and tell me in the comments, is this the correct answer? Would this get a point? Yes, no, and why? <clears throat> and why? So just number eight. So many of you are saying no, it's repeating words, too many words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a common error that some candidates do. Um, so if we see here, elevate the limb, a sling for arm injuries, a pillow for leg injuries. So you've just copied here, the candidates just copied here, a pillow for leg injuries, which is correct. But if we look at the question, um, we don't want to pop for leg injuries because it's already stated in the question. It says, what should be used to elevate a patient's fractured leg? Fractured leg is a leg injury. So don't repeat words <clears throat> already stated in the question. That's right. Yeah, I can see a lot of you. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here I have a gap fill question. Falling on outstretched hand is a typical cause of a mm, of the elbow. So strategy, I'd like you to read the sentence. We then underline the key words. Okay. Um, and then we'll predict the type of word or information that would be in this. So we've got falling on an outstretched hand, typical cause of a something of the elbow. And then we need to think, you know, what type of word is going to go here? It's going to be some sort of injury, a noun, something like that. Okay, we then need to scan the text for the answer write the answer down and then it's a good idea to read through the whole sentence sometimes to check make sure that it makes sense and that nothing's repeated okay so there it is in the text elbow dislocation after falling on an outstretched hand so look at this answer here what mistake has this candidate made let me know in the comments <clears throat> would this what what's the mistake <coughs> excuse me mm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh-huh yes yes niv bertha you've got it yeah you don't need to put elbow in absolutely yeah it's repeated yeah absolutely okay so elbow and elbow so you wouldn't get the point for that so don't make that mistake okay another one here we've got what is the maximum dose of morphine per kilo of a patient's weight that can be given using the intramuscular route what mistake has this candidate made Mm. So this is a common mistake here. Um, the answer isn't 10 milligrams. That's a maximum in total. If you gave 10 milligrams per kilogram, to someone that would be an awful lot of morphine and you might possibly kill them so 10 milligrams is the total max but it's asking here what's the maximum dose of morphine per kilo so the answer is here 
okay? So that they have identified it correctly, but they've not put the maximum. They've put the range. So if it asks for a maximum, don't put the range. The range is 0.2 milligrams per kilo to a maximum of 10 milligrams in total, not per kilo. So 0.2 milligrams is the correct answer. And what about this one? Why would, what's wrong with this answer? <clears throat> yeah, this is also um, when you're in a hurry and you write, sometimes you might not write legibly. And it's really important that the um, examiners can read your writing. Otherwise, you won't get the point. I mean, I can't, can't quite work out what they're trying to say there. So do make sure that you write clearly in the exam. Okay. <clears throat> so just to recap some common errors, um, single double letters, be aware of those. Um, wrong or missing letter, changing the form, for example, singular and plural or ed to ing, writing too many words, missing a word, not including a unit of measurement if required. Not writing the range, sorry, writing the range, not the maximum or minimum, <clears throat> or vice versa. And illegible handwriting. So these are the most common errors that candidates make in the OET reading aid. So what can you do to improve? Well, copying words accurately under time pressure is vital in reading A. Spelling errors will lose marks. So practice copying words quickly and accurately from a text. We'll have a go at that in a minute. And be aware of common spelling patterns in English. So one thing that you might like to do is check out um, medical prefixes and suffixes. Yeah, so know how to, to do them. So bi is two, latero is on the side, neuro, optimo, optimo, you know, know how to spell those prefixes and suffixes. And practice copying. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Hopefully you've got a pen and a piece of paper with you. Um, if not, you can come back and watch the video and do it later. So you've now got 30 seconds. I would like you to try and copy these four words in 30 seconds as accurately as you can. Okay, so off you go now. Okay, stop. Now have a little look and double check. Let me know, did you make any mistakes? I mean, they're quite tricky words to copy. I mean, I had to go at this activity um, <clears throat> and I think I missed out the um, one of the R's in hemorrhage when I copied it over. Um, so this is really something that you can practice in your self-study time. Just go to any, um, <clears throat> any text, yeah? Patient info or the, the NHS, um, website could be good um, for this. Okie dokie. Um, keep a vocabulary notebook of common spelling errors you make. <clears throat> Write an example to help you remember the co correct spelling. For example, advise is the verb, advice is the noun. Okay, so this will be really good for your writing, for your writing and for listening as well. So keep um, a list of common spelling errors. Okay, so before we finish, I'm just going to recap my top tips for avoiding spelling mistakes in reading A. So for gap fill questions, write your answers and then read before and after the gap to avoid repetition. If uncertain, one idea could be to count the letters of the word. Does it match the number of letters in the text? Notice any double letters? Practice copying tricky words quick, quickly and accurately like we just did. Keep a note of words that you often misspell and be aware of common spelling patterns in English and medical English. 
So we have time for a quick question or two about reading A, please. Um, and let me know in the comments. Um, don't have much time, but a quick question or two, I'm happy to answer. Um, in the meantime, if you're preparing for your OET exam, do check out our website, specialistlanguagecourses.com. We've got our Reach OETB nursing and medicine self-study course or in combination with the teacher. If you're just focusing on writing, we've got a writing correction service and also OET practice test, which includes a speaking mock test with a tutor and fully corrected and graded letter as well. So do check it out. There are some other things, as I mentioned before, like some grammar courses and things like that, um, medical terminology um, and general nursing um, <clears throat> vocabulary as well. And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we have lots of free tips and strategies. And make sure you're following us on social media. We're always putting things on our Facebook page that will help you with your OET preparation. Okie dokie. Um, I have a quick question here. Should I put the unit of a figure? Um, That's a very good question. <clears throat> I think it depends on what's being put in the question. So if it says, for example, we looked at that one before, what, um, um, how much milliliters per kilogram, if that's written in the question, you don't need to write it in the answer, okay? If it isn't written in the question, then you must write it in the answer. Okay. And a question from Merrick. Uh, hi, Merrick. Can I answer in uppercase? I believe the answer is yes, you can. Um, you can find more information about that on the OET website, I believe. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you very much for um, joining us today. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'll be back next Wednesday um, on our Facebook page. I'm doing a live Q&A at 12 o'clock UK time. So depending on where you are in the world, you might need to change that. So do check out, um, <clears throat> do check out um, our Facebook page and um, you can join us for that. And I can answer any question about OET, any part of the OET paper. Okay. Well, lovely to see you all here today and I'll see you next time. Bye.